After the insane success of Super Mario Land on Game Boy, not to mention the success of the handheld console itself, it was a no-brainer that we'd get a sequel. And in 1992, that's exactly what we'd get, Super Mario Land 2, The Six Golden Coins. The game introduces Wario, Mario's childhood friend and bizarro world doppelganger, who serves as the game's antagonist, replacing the one-dimensional Tatanga from its predecessor. Wario casts a spell over Mario's private island, Mario Land, which brainwashes everybody into following Wario and attacking Mario. Wario has even taken over Mario's castle, which is only unlockable by retrieving the six golden coins, which are scattered in six uniquely themed zones. I had no idea Mario even had a castle, or even a private island no less, but the Game Boy Universe did its own thing anyway. Like I said, there are six different zones, which you can visit in any order via the Overland map, although each zone has its own set of linear stages you have to advance through, each one containing a boss that guards one of the coins. Speaking of coins, you collect them as usual, although unlike in most Mario games where they award you extra lives after collecting a hundred of them, you'll instead be able to spend them on a roulette wheel style game that will reward you with power-ups or extra lives. There are four different wheels of varying entry fees. As you would expect, the more expensive ones will dole out greater prizes, but then again you could end up coming away empty-handed. It's similar to the slot machine game at the end of each stage in Super Mario Bros. 2, but this time you can access the games at any point in the game via the map. The non-boss stages in each zone are re-accessible, so you can always go back and stock up on more coins to farm up on lives or whatever going into the Wario castle. There's also a similar mini-game at the end of each stage if you ring the two bells. Each stage has one about mid-stage and the other right by the goal. The gameplay itself very much resembles earlier Mario platformers. A lot of the franchise's signature enemies and items make appearances, including Goombas, Koopa Troopas, the aforementioned Coins, Mushrooms, Starman, and Fire Flower. But there are a lot of original enemies, like frogs, ants, and Jason Voorhees masks with a knife embedded into them. You also have original power-ups, like the carrot, which gives you the ability to float, similar to the Leafs raccoon from Mario 3, only instead of momentum giving you the ability to fly, you can sail across the screen by tapping the B button to keep yourself afloat as you gradually come back down. And similar to Mario 3, you may come across the carrots while you have a flower power-up and vice versa, forcing you to make a decision on which power-up you want. Only this time there tends to be a more balanced number of flowers and carrots. Although the weird thing is, you have to find a mushroom before you can acquire a flower, like usual. But you can get the carrot even if you're small Mario. So for the purposes of this walkthrough, I'll refer to any mushroom slash flower question blocks as having a mushroom. As this will vary depending on your physical state at the time. In general, Six Golden Coins does a good job in staying faithful to the series, while simultaneously adding its own spin to it. With its somewhat non-linear stage layout, unique enemies and stage design, the coin shop, and the departure from the whole damsel in distress plot device, with the new baddie being an instant classic as well. I like how there's a variety of visuals with all the different zones, there's outer space, underwater, and a haunted house theme, which helps keep the visual department fresh with the lack of color in the Game Boy. And there's a lot to be had with the stage's music selections too, which is actually more plentiful than Mario 3, which had like a million stages in the game and only about five different songs. But this game is no Mario 3 overall, which is not a knock. I mean, there were only a handful of games even by 1992 that could even be in the conversation of competing with Mario 3. So I'm not trying to compare apples to oranges here. The only real flaw you could really come up with for Mario Land 2 is that, at the time, it may have seemed a bit dated. Super Mario World on SNES had been out for a year already. But that's nitpicky as shit, considering this was a freaking portable game. Six Golden Coins often gets overlooked, especially since it birthed the classic character Wario. If this somehow slipped under your radar, you owe it to yourself to play it. Before you get a chance to explore the map, you will have to go through an intro stage, which acts as a tutorial for beginners and rust shakeup for veterans. There's Goombas and Koopa Troopers to stomp, and you'll learn here that you can pick up and wield shells from the fallen troopers. There's a mushroom early on here in this block, and if you go down the first pipe, you'll get some bonus coins. Up ahead, these blocks will give you a Starman and a 1-Up Heart. Grab them both and barrel on down. 
If you eliminate five enemies while invincible, you'll get an extra life. Ring the bell up ahead and use the spin jump to break these blocks to get the one up. Go down this pipe to grab some extra coins, and up ahead is the bell by the goal, and you'll now be free to travel around the map. So the game is non-linear, and there are no real advantages to going through any of the game's particular zones in any order. It's not like Mega Man, where you get a special weapon for completing certain stages. You can complete half a zone and leave it at any time to come back to. You can complete all the stages in each zone except for the boss stages, and then come back to grab all the six coins in one full swoop. Or you can just do each zone one at a time completely. It makes no difference. Since it matters not, I'll be going through each zone in clockwise formation from where you start, beginning with Tree Zone, which is basically like a grassy world one of Mario's days gone by. Stage 1 has all these woodland creatures, like this bug that flies around, a hedgehog that harnesses electricity and rolls, and a frog that darts his tongue out. At this small platform, jump up to summon the invisible blocks and climb your way up for a 1-up. There's another one a little bit up ahead by this drop. Toward the end, there's more invisible blocks that'll lead you to a line of a bunch of coins, and the goal is just ahead. Stage 2 has water. I guess that's what it is, it's just only in certain spots. Maybe it's tree set? Because you move pretty slowly in it, I don't know. Whatever it is, you can swim in it and take yourself up or let yourself drift down slowly. Early on, you'll run into these bullfish. They just swim back and forth. You can stop them out to be rid of them. At this drop, swim up through here to get to a 1-up and then continue on. These little shelled creatures will turn into bombs and then blow up if you stomp them, which can damage you, so keep that in mind if you want to take them out. Use the water to flow over these spikes, and when you get here, you're at a fork in the road of sorts. If you continue down the main path, you'll be spending most of the time swimming your way through patches of water to keep from falling into spikes. If you go down, you'll find a carrot power-up which will let you float across the long pit of spikes, but you'll hit a 1-up. The goal is just to head where the forks meet, but if you swim up here where the other path ends, you'll be able to use your ears to float into this little nook which leads to a secret stage. The stage is very easy. The only hazards are Koopa Troopers. There are two 1-ups to be had, one in this block, and one in this one right before the end, plus a lot of coins. The only thing that sucks about this area is that even though the door to it is right by the goal, you still have to go back and do the stage over again. But considering the stage isn't all that hard, I'd say it's worth it. Now you're at a fork in the road. You can either go this way to, we'll call it stage 3 I guess, or you can try your hand at the beehive stage over here, we'll call it a 4. I'll show both stages and you decide which one you'd rather play, or you can do both and rack up some coins, lives, etc. Stage 3 has a lot of pits, or rather you're on a bunch of leaf platforms over a giant pit. Watch the piranha plants as you leap from pipe to pipe, and grab the one up in this hidden block here. Now you'll ascend upward and be in a situation where if you fall down any of these pits, you'll actually be backtracked to earlier in the stage, or perhaps even down into the pit to your death. Smack this block for a one up, and follow it to here where you can jump up for it. Cross these dropping platforms, and don't let these dipshit flies bait you into trying to stomp them. They're playing possum and move out of the way so you fall into the abyss. There's a hidden carry here, which will let you glide across the way and snag all these coins. There's another hidden one up over this falling platform. Then take the upper path here, which will lead you to the only bell in the stage and the goal. The beehive stage 4 has, who would have thunk it, bees. They fly out of the honeycombs in the background. You can see their beady eyes peering out, and they're fucking invincible to your fireballs. What are these bees made of? You at least can stomp them out, Michael Strahan style. Then be on the lookout for these moths or whatever. They're essentially thwomps from Mario 3. Just wait for them to drop in front of you before slowly ascending, then make your move. When you get to these pipes, go down the center one and hit all the question mark blocks across the way, smacking any enemy that's above the next level so they're out of your way to travel across the platform and hit the blocks above that. When you clear the whole side, do the same thing on the opposite side. There's a mushroom in this block on the left side, and a star man over here on the right. Take the upper path, ring the bell, and grab the mushroom from here. And soon after are some hidden blocks that will lead you to the goal. 
In stage 5, use this floating platform here to get across. And grab the mushroom here if you can. Take out the power goombas on your way, and then use these owls as platforms to get across the pits. Ride the clouds across the next pit, ring the bell here, and then take these floating platforms to get a carry here, and a one up here. Fly across to get some coins, and come back to head up this pipe to get some in this little bonus nook. A few pits and power goombas later is the boss. It's either Heckle or Jekyll, I guess. He'll fly around in a simple U pattern back and forth across the screen. Just jump on him on his way down, and if you've still got the carrot, it's even easier, as you can maneuver yourself horizontally with even more precision. After a few shots, he's done for, and you've got your first golden coin. Before we head to the next zone, along the way is this auto-scrolling bonus stage of sorts. It's just a little mini stage with a few coin boxes, mushrooms, and fire flowers, etc. The only enemies throughout are Goombas and Paragoombas, so nothing really to worry about unless you somehow manage to squeeze yourself between a coin box and the auto-scrolling wall of doom like I did. You really get nothing for completing this stage, so the only reason to even bother would be if you're a small Mario, you're broke, and you want to grab some free power-ups before heading to the next stage. So there's this hippo stage along the way, and while it's not a proper zone in and of itself, it is necessary to access one that is. At the beginning, there's a bubble that pops out of this hippo statue that you can enter to float around in. Plus, it shields you from attack. Follow the swirling coin pattern from platform to platform, and maneuver your way between the birds and spikes. If you burst your bubble, you can grab another one about halfway through the level. And you're gonna need it to get high enough to access the top goal of the stage. More on that later. If you stay in the water, you can just stay low and you'll bypass most of the hazards throughout the entirety of the stage. The only thing you'll really have to do is slip past this fish. You won't get nearly as many coins, and when you get to the low door, you'll just be sent back out into the map. Whereas if you take the top door, you'll gain access to the hidden space zone. This is the one where if you exit the screen on the map, you won't be able to re-access it whenever you want. You'll have to actually go back through the fucking hippo stage. Not that it's hard, it's just a nuisance, so keep that in mind. There are only two space stages anyway, so you might as well take them both on right away. Now you're on the moon, and Mario is in low gravity jump mode, in similar fashion to the whole bubble thing you just encountered. Take advantage of this slow moon jump ability by positioning yourself easily to squash enemies, and get to higher places, including this one-up part early on after climbing the coin boxes. Take another leap of faith, and after collecting some coins, smack the hidden blocks to get another one-up over here. There are a lot of spikes, so don't let yourself drop aimlessly to the ground. At the first bell, rather than pressing on and going through this rigmarole of carefully jumping over the spiked walls while taking out the ball-spitting hogs, instead climb up these hidden blocks and get the long-range jumps across to nab a bunch of coins. When you get to the end, you have the option of dropping down here and finishing the stage. But if you stay up top and enter the top goal, you'll get a special stage, which is mostly a bunch of coins and some narrow little drops that lead you to the bottom where you'll miss all the goodies. Exiting the stage will send you back to the checkpoint of Space Stage 1, and you'll then want to go through to the end. But if you want, you can keep going back to the special stage to farm up on coins, or better yet, extra lives. There are two in this drop right here after passing the second big-ass block with the star on it. Rinse, wash, repeat, and you can get as many lives as you so choose. The second Space Stage is an auto-scroller, and this time you can flow even more so by essentially jumping in mid-air, keeping yourself off-land indefinitely. The majority of the hazards in the stage are these pissed-off star men. They grant you the opposite of invincibility by killing your ass. Maneuver your way between them, using your small anti-gravity jumps in tight spaces. Grab a mushroom from this block, and then after wiggling your way through here, grab a mushroom from this block. There'll be these blowfish type things that will open up and close back. Don't touch them when they're open. When you get to the end, there'll be another mushroom if you need it in this block right here before the pipe to the boss. And hey look, it's dipshit again. Tonga will fire a wave blast forward and an orb of some kind that drops to the floor and rides straight across. It seems like a lot of bullshit, but really all you have to do is crouch down in the opposite corner of him and all that garbage flies over you. After a few shots, he'll do a swooping motion from one side to the next. This is your opportunity to stomp him, or take shots with the fireballs if you have them. 
Keep it up until he's done four, and you'll get your second golden coin. Next up, we'll take on the Macro Zone. At first glance, it looks like it's going to be a nod to World 4 of Super Mario 3, the giant world. Only this time, you've shrunk, so now all the enemies are going to be monstrous counterparts. But instead, you just take on large ants. These regular-ass ants will just walk back and forth. The ones with the minor hat on will push rocks in your direction. The ones with the cannon on their head will fire projectiles. And the ones with helmets will suddenly project spikes out of their bodies. Early on, you'll get a fork in the road where you can either head up top and wipe out a spiked ant, or ride the platform down here and grab a mushroom. Right after that is a carrot up in this block, so either option is available to you. I personally like wiping out the ants with the fireballs. A little later, you'll run into another fork, where you can ride another platform underneath, and you go down a hidden pipe for some more goodies. You'll have to go back and take the upper path anyway. The second bell is just ahead over this floating platform, and you'll finish the stage. Or if you have fireballs, you can wipe out these blocks protecting this hidden pipe just after the second fork, which leads to a secret stage, which is just an auto-scroller with a bunch of coins and no enemies. Just don't let yourself fall down a pit. Finishing this will also let you bypass two other stages and take you directly to stage four. But in case you couldn't get to the secret stage, let's look at stages two and three. The first chunk of stage two has ants and piranha plants and whatnot. Grab a mushroom from this block right away to give you some firepower to easily wipe this shit away. You'll end up underwater. Swim between the cheap cheeps and grab the star in this block to plow through the enemies ahead. Ring the bell and then do the spin thing to get another star up here in this block to make it last longer. Soon after are these bugs that fly away. Scale the blocks to ring the second bell and the stage is completed. Stage 3 has some Goombas and a carrot here in the beginning. And then you'll end up on the most unanimated conveyor belt in the history of video games. But you at least get the arrows to show you what direction they take you. Keep yourself from advancing beyond the pipe until the piranha plants clear out. Then go up this middle one to get some extra coins. If you have fireballs, clear out these blocks to get an M bag. And after going up this pipe, the first bell will be waiting for you. Grab a carrot from this block up ahead and then use the flying ability to glide up to the next platform back and forth till you get to the top, being wary of the power goomba on your way. And when you get to the goal, be sure to go up one more platform to get the second bell. The fourth and final stage of the macro zone has a mushroom at the first question block, and the next block has a one-up heart that gets immediately snagged by this dipshit and runs off with it. Chase him down to get your rightfully earned extra life. Watch out when you're on this conveyor belt, it'll lead to these Mega Man style spikes on the wall. But you can stop yourself short and slip up. There's a carrot up here, and then in this block is another one up here that'll get grabbed by this son of a fuck. Run him down. There's a bell soon after, and then a mushroom in this block right before another conveyor belt that takes you backwards, trying to send you into a spike wall. Run against it and take out the power goombers as you scale the small wall on your way to the pipe to battle this giant rat. It'll crawl along the ceiling and wall, crawling through the pipes on the sides of the wall. It won't fire any projectiles, it'll just crawl. So, all you have to do is jump on it or shoot. But that's easier said than done, cause this rodent is quick, and it will come straight down the middle sometimes. Best bet is to get on the opposite side of the room, Keep your distance and wait for him to crawl to your side of the room, bumping him off when he gets closer to the wall on your side. Or lay the smack down with fireballs. You'll finish him off and get your third golden coin. Next is the pumpkin zone. As cliche and overdone as the spooky haunted house theme was in video games at the time, this is really the first time it was used in a Mario game. Early on, you'll encounter Jason masks that just walk around which is the last enemy I was expecting to see in a Mario game. The spiked ball will shift back and forth on the chain and flash briefly before it shifts. Slip through the gap after it does. There's a carrot on this block and then go in this pipe. There are some boos in here. Jump up and smack the hidden blocks, keeping in mind that turning away from the boos will cause them to chase you. Face them to keep them at bay. And the middle question block will be a one-up heart. The others are coins if you want them. Watch out for the spiked balls on these jumps up the platforms. They're kind of hard to see coming downward. Soon you'll run into this wizard fuck that sends bats at you and otherwise stands in the same spot. 
take out the bats and him, and jump down to hit the second bell and clear the stage. The second stage starts off with these floating umbrellas. Their patterns are pretty erratic, so just sprint underneath them. If you need a mushroom, slip down this pipe. You'll end up in the water underneath a bunch of invisible blocks, including the one with the shroom. So you'll have to duck under the fish when it passes by till you can get to the left where the opening is. Shortly after the cyclopses that dash at you is the first bell. You'll go up a pipe in this narrow space with some booze. There's a mushroom on the left side, and then up a couple small pipes, and there's a one up on the right. Just be careful since the space is so tight. You might need to maneuver through the pipes to relocate the booze. After you drop down here, there's another one up in this nook in the blocks, and a carrot if you head back a bit. Grab the star here, and you can blast your way through the rest of the stage. Floating your way from this platform to the next will lead you to the second bell. There's access to an optional special stage shortly before the end. If you slip down here in the water, it'll lead you to a pipe you'll need to break the blocks to get to, and you'll be taken to it. There's a shitload of coins you can grab up by floating across and back. There are a lot of coins, but after you leave, you'll still have to go back through the second pumpkin stage again, so take it or leave it. Third stage is inside a haunted house. You'll run into ghost goombas early. They float around slowly, and you can't stop them, so run out ahead. There's a carrot in this question block up here if you need it, and you can scale straight up these platforms instead of running around to the gaps. And after the piranha plant, go down this pipe, and you'll have to tread lightly here to get the one up up top, because there are a lot of hidden blocks that'll, well, block your path. Break the block against the pipe and smash the block above it to access the mushroom. And then once you get to the next level, break the fourth block from the left and hit the block all the way to the right to get the one up. Carefully make your way across these blocks, they'll flash on and off, and will blend in with the darkness when they're off and you won't see. So negotiate with the booze if they're around, and don't step somewhere if you don't know whether or not there's a block. Right after that, you'll head down some descending platforms to some more flashy blocks that'll lead you up to the second bell and the end of the stage. But if you have the carrot, you can instead float from the first descending platform across the way to another secret stage. This one is different in that there's a lot more prizes to be had, in this case one-ups. There are extra lives out the fucking yin-yang here, most of which you'll have to blast through blocks with fireballs, which isn't a problem because they give you a flower right off the bat. The problem is that a lot of these hearts try to run away and lure you into a pit to nullify the whole thing. There are a lot of extra lives though, so it's high risk, high reward. And even with the reward, you'll still have to go back and complete stage 3, but there's so many extra lives in this bitch, it's worth it. Just be careful not to die right away. The fourth and final pumpkin stage has some booze and this weird wormy thing that floats around. Run past it all and go down the first pipe for a boatload of coins, a mushroom, and a one-up. Then return back up. There's fire under the cauldrons here. Don't walk into them, said Captain Obvious. Grab the carrot in this question block and ring the bell on your way to the next area. I don't know what the hell is in the formaldehyde jars or whatever they are, so just wander past all the Jason masks. Go down the next pipe to get into the underground area for some coins, grab them and stomp out the Jason masks. Go up the fourth pipe to summon a hidden mushroom, and then up the fifth pipe to summon a hidden M bag. Then go back down and up the first pipe to claim your prizes. Right after is the boss, the Wicked Witch of Mario Island, who will cast a fireball at you immediately followed by one of the three cauldron lids to fly up into the ceiling of spikes. She'll stay still after launching the fireball, so keep your distance, jump over the fireball and stomp her, or hit her with the fireball then retreat and continue. If you're gonna attack her with fire, just be sure not to stay on the same cauldron or you'll be sent airborne. After four hits, the Wicked Witch is dead, and you'll have obtained the fourth golden coin. Next up is Mario Zone, which takes place inside a giant fucking Mario toy. Why Mario would want this creepy ass thing on his island is beyond me. In the first stage, grab the mushroom right off the bat and scale the gears, some of which are spinning and act as traditional side-scrolling conveyor belts. Wait for the opening and avoid the spinning spike ball, thankfully it's slow. When you jump across these gears, be aware that they'll spin you downward, which can be bad news since there are spiked balls at the bottom scattered here and there, so don't pussyfoot around. After entering the pipe, grab the carrot to float across the way here and ring the bell. 
giant screws will pop out of the ground in an attempt to screw you over. You can grab a mushroom under this question block, or you can just say screw it and move on. If you have a flower by this point, you can blast through these blocks here to get a small hidden area for a decent chunk of coins. Grab the carrot here, and you have the option to float across and back, carefully weaving your way between the hazards for some coins, but I'd otherwise just drop down on the left side and ring the bell to finish the stage. Why risk your power up just for the sake of perhaps another power up eventually? Early on in stage 2, you'll meet these pigs that spit cannonballs slowly. Smash them, shoot them, or just ignore them. Jump off the power goombas to avoid the spikes below, and you'll find a mushroom under this block here next to the barricaded one up. To get to it, go down the second pipe after this one and jump softly over the goombas so you don't end up in the upper half, or just shoot them down if you have the flower. Use the beach ball to bypass the spikes, or you can take your chances jumping between them. Up ahead, there's more of these rotating platform things, and four paths you can take. Take the last option and grab the carrot. It'll make sailing over these spikes easier, not to mention you'll be able to ring the bell as you finish the stage. The third stage has a row of question blocks with a surprise evil jackass in the box on the last one. Avoid it. Ride these metal balls over the spikes as far across the chains as they'll go before they flicker and disappear. Hop to the next one at that point, but be aware of the massive bullet bills that fly in from off screen. Grab the mushroom in the question block here if you can. Duck under the spikes on this conveyor belt, grab the carrot from this question block, let the claw grab you and take you across the spikes for some coins, and then head down this pipe that'll lead you to an extra life. Ride this metal ball and leap over the bullet bills until you get high enough to reach the next platform, and ride the claw to the bell and the goal. The fourth and final stage in Mario Zone is a fucking Lego stage, which is unexpected, but cool. It also has an identity crisis, cause it thinks it's a castle stage with the bullet bills and floating stridex pad orbs from Super Mario 3. These things are a nuisance and harder to distinguish than their NES counterparts due to the lack of color and distracting platform tiles that they tend to blend in with. You can head down this little tunnel for a chunk of some hidden coins, but it's not really worth fighting the Stridex pads. The risk isn't worth the reward. Just climb the stairs, kill the Goombas, and grab the mushroom in this question block. Ring the bell after taking out the cannonball pigs, and you'll come across these giant skill saws. Take the top path so you can jump over them easily rather than ducking underneath them. Grab the mushroom in this block, and the pipe to the boss is just ahead. The three little pigs in clock form. They take turns popping out of their clocks to try to roll you to death. Watch their patterns and squash them, if you don't have fireballs, which would make this fight a lot easier. The first pig will just roll around back and forth, easy pattern, but it does pick up speed, so don't dilly-dally. The second one is faster and bounces up in the air a bit, stay to the edge and jump on them. The last pig will sail up into the air higher, so you're gonna want to get some hype. Try to time it so you land on him on his downstroke, for lack of a better word. A few hits from each, and you'll blow their houses down and take the fifth golden coin. The final area is the turtle zone, where you have to let a giant fucking turtle swallow you whole to gain access. What kind of acid is Mario on to put all this wacky shit on his island? Or mushrooms, I guess. Anyway, the first stage is naturally a water level. Hop in, swim around the cheap cheeps, and swim up onto this platform for a mushroom. If you have a carrot, you can soar over for a quicker path and some extra coins. Otherwise, you'll have to maneuver around the tight space of cheap cheeps and this shark. Ring the bell, and carefully weave between all the hazards up ahead. These platforms only serve to make things more compact. Although this one up on the surface leads to another mushroom, and if you're able to acquire a flower through all this, you'll be able to blast through all this shit and get through with much less trouble. After traversing all these thin platforms, there's a hidden M bag. Right after that is the second bell and the goal. The second stage takes place inside a submarine, and seemingly one that's sinking, as it's loaded with water. Slip in, swim right, and maneuver between the bullshit. Swim up this path and avoid the spiked walls of death. Heading right is the main way to go, but if you're small Mario and head left through this gap, and if you manage to swim between all this insanity and the tight window it allows you to, you'll reach the secret stage, which has a one-up heart, a lot of coins, and also a lot of spikes. 
between all the danger that lurks between all the spikes plus the tight window just to get to the damn stage not to mention you still have to go back and finish stage two i don't really find it to be worth it so i just head right and bypass all that slip down this narrow passage and be careful avoiding the spike balls there are very little safe spots here after ascending through this stairwell of turtles, you'll hit the first bell and enter a pipe that begins the kinda sorta maze portion of the stage, although it's really less complicated than how it's presented. After slipping down this narrow gap, swim left and head down this pipe. It'll lead to a little spot where you can grab a hidden one-up and a flower if you're a small Mario, otherwise you won't fit. Head back to the narrow gap you came from and go right this time. Follow the linear path, carefully walk underneath the spike ball, and wait for the openings when these giant spikes get out of your way. And the goal is just ahead. Use the moving platforms to get high enough to grab the bell if you so wish. The third stage presumably takes place inside the whale on the map screen. I reckon it's homage to Pinocchio. This long strip of substance is swimmable, strangely. Glide across to bump this block and get a carrot. There's another batch of swimmable strips up ahead. You can swim down and grab the coins if you think eight coins are worth the risk of getting snagged by one of the tusks. I just crush the Paragoomba, ring the bell, and call it a day. Stomp the Koopa Trooper and kick the shell to take out this little dipshit. At the home stretch, swim through this midair water patch, hit this block for a mushroom, and there's a hidden M bag right here. Just watch for the tusks above and below, along with the skeleton fish in the water, and the boss is just ahead, a giant squid. It's very slow and methodical, sending its children after you like the coward that it is. Just stay up high so you can land on the young squid, it won't let you kill them, and get yourself into position to stomp the mama, or papa, whatever the case may be. When it's down low, that's the best time to make your move. Three hits, and that's all she wrote. And you'll get the sixth and final golden coin. So now that you've obtained all the coins, you can access Wario's castle. Before you do, bring all your coins to the slot machine games and try to get all the extra lives, power-ups, all the bells and whistles you can, because this is it. Once you have what you need, or at least all that you can, head to the castle. Grab the mushroom right off the bat, and then you'll encounter these giant spiked balls that swing back and forth in an upside down arc pattern. Slip under them when they stop, or jump over when they're on their way back. Stay low to avoid the fire breath of the piranha plants. You'll see the flames flicker before they shoot to give you a warning, and continue once the fire has passed by. Ride these propeller platforms across the lava and duck underneath the low walls. There's a short opening between the Wario fists. Run through when it's just on the way back up. These skull platforms crumble right after you land on them, so don't waste any time jumping across and grab the mushroom in this block here. These bone platforms will raise once you land on them, so similar to the last batch, jump quickly, but also stay low to avoid the spikes on the ceiling. You'll then run into a short gauntlet battling these floating heads with pencil-thin mustaches. The first room has one of these guys, the second room has two, and the third one also has two, but they're faster. In all three cases, they bounce in the same pattern as that screensaver where the object looks like it's going to hit the corner directly. Keep your distance, wait for them to come down, stomp, and then get out of the way until they reactivate and continue. They each take two hits. Once the room is cleared, you can move on. After you wipe them all out, there's a mushroom waiting in this block, and the final battle with Wario is just ahead. He'll dart from one side of the room to the other, stopping to smash the ground, causing the heated lamp or whatever the hell that thing on the ceiling is that keeps passing by to fall, which can hurt you. If you're standing on the ground when he does his smash, you'll be temporarily stuck in that position, so try to get airborne when he jumps to avoid that. Make sure you're not standing directly underneath one of the lamp things when he does this, and smash him after he hits the ground. After three hits, he'll run to the next room, and you can grab a carrot along the way. In the second room, Wario eats a carrot himself, and is granted the power of flight. He'll soar up to the ceiling and glide back and forth between dropping, smashing the ground and causing the lamp thing to drop. It's similar to the last segment, just now he's up in the air instead of on the ground. Keep yourself from being directly underneath him in the lamp, and jump when he smashes the ground, following it up with a smash. 
After three hits, he takes off once again. And now you can grab a mushroom on the way out, but I prefer fighting with the carrot, if you still got it. He'll toss a spinning fireball in your direction, and then jump across the room. Leap over the fire, keep your distance, and then jump onto him after he lands. Or if he's close to you at the time, run underneath him. If you do still have the carrot, you can float to the opposite side of the room while he jumps, and you'll be in a pretty safe spot. After three hits, he's all done. For real this time. Wario cries like a little bitch. Mario restakes his claim as the king of the castle, and the credits roll. There would later be a sequel called Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3, which would technically serve as both a sequel and the launch of a spin-off series at the same time. But that's another story for another day. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.